What is up guys, Pie Muffin here, and we are back with our SAO Rising Steel video. <clears throat> Today, we're gonna be talking about preparing for the future, so to speak. So, this game launched, I looked it up yesterday, it unofficially launched in, um, I think it was like towards the middle of November. I think I remember downloading it around like the 15th or 16th. And then I think it officially went up a little after the 20th. Um, so we are kind of getting close to the one year anniversary for the game. But let's first look at all this stuff here. They had a live stream for Tokyo Game Show. And let's just quickly go over what was shown here. So if you have, if maybe you're not playing right now, um, there is a login bonus where you can get this Alice and get all this stuff to pretty much awaken her. It's pretty much just an adult Alice wearing her child Alice outfit. Uh, it's a fun little free thing to get there. And the first day gives you 100 diamond cubes, so that's pretty good there. The uh, Underworld Guild War starts on the 30th, which is Wednesday, so I will definitely make a video on that. Um, I assume it's probably going to be the exact same thing as War of Underworld, where you can start a battle and then people can join you. But I think for this one, only your guild members are going to be able to join you. You'll probably have like a, a subtilizer boss for your guild, and you can probably attack it a certain amount of times per day. Uh, so each member in your guild will have to attack it and do as much damage as you can. Um, so that's kind of my guess on that. The scout is still live for subtilizer. Up to this point, I have done the first three steps, and I still haven't gotten anything. But uh, since I'm already this far deep, I will go ahead and do the final two steps. I, I just have to wait for whatever we get from this Underworld Guild War, and then... Uh, for Ordinal Battle to reset, and that should get me enough to do the last two steps. And then after that, I am strictly saving for the anniversary. And I recommend, if people aren't going for Subtilizer, don't summon anymore. Anything that's gonna, and I'm going to talk about this more uh, when we get to the point that I'm trying to make here, but the anniversary is less than two months away. There's probably going to be at least two or three anniversary banners, so two or three really hyped characters... Uh, or double character banners, who knows what they decide to do. And I know I'm going to see people who are like, oh, I don't have any gems. Uh, I don't have anything to spend. And it's because people like to do that first step on every banner. But I'm telling you, save for the anniversary. It's going to, pro it's going to have increased rates. Uh, I can almost guarantee that that'll be a thing. So even if you are like missing out on a lot of characters... This can be your chance to pull a lot of unfeatured four stars and kind of build your account up. Save for the anniversary. Don't summon anymore from this point forward. Unless you've already started on Subtilizer. Maybe you want to finish it because you've already started and wasted some gems. You want to kind of finish it off. But after Subtilizer, I guarantee October is going to have a bunch of bait banners that are going to make people want to summon. But you really just shouldn't. You should just hold off. Those characters will come back later and you'll have another chance to get them. Um, Subtilizer aside, this would probably be a more useful banner to newer players to summon on. Uh, if you're not summoning on Subtilizer, you know, maybe you started on this one because it's increased rates uh, for all the steps, as well as it's just these enhanced mode units. So these eight was eight characters here. These are the eight you can pull from that banner. So if you don't have any enhanced mode characters, this might be a banner for you to consider. But then after that, like I said, don't summon anymore. Save for like two months. By the time you... If you start saving now all the way to uh, the anniversary, you should have enough to at least do two full uh, step-up sets. So you should have like 2,000 diamond cubes by then. I would definitely say you should be able to get 2,000 in two months. Um, Let's see. Uh, they're also giving 100 diamond cubes as a present for the live stream. So that's another 100 on top of this, so that's pretty good there. I don't know if they've given this out yet. Um, 9.30 is Austin's birthday. We'll get 25 Diamond Cubes on that. More campaigns for Silica's birthday on 10.4, and Kirito's birthday is on 10.7. So expect 25 cubes for each of these days at least. Uh, so that's 75 cubes within like a week. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> And last thing here, so new stories featuring Aegis coming soon. Aegis goes to a hot spring. Six type of stories will be available. 
look forward to it. So maybe like six types. I don't know if that means six events or there's going to be six story parts to the hot spring thing. But I guess we'll see there. Nice to get more ATIS content. I was complaining recently about how ATIS is the OC for this game, but she really doesn't do too much. And we really only have like, what, three or four summonable versions of her. Usually the original character gets the most gotcha units out of any character, but for uh, Rising Steel, it doesn't seem to be the case. There was a commercial that played during the anime episode, the, the final anime episodes broadcast in Japan, where they showed off this. Now, obviously, this is Aegis over here, but this, this is Roni from Moon Cradle. Now, if you don't know what Moon Cradle is, it's basically uh, two books, uh, two light novels that takes place during the 200 years that Kirito and Asuna spent in Underworld when they were stuck there, that we obviously didn't get to see adapted in the anime, and it wasn't in the original Alicization uh, books until Moon Cradle. So um, it does seem like the one-year anniversary, plus it says here, approaching one-year anniversary, could SAO ARS have new things in store? What this seems to be kind of teasing is that maybe we're going to get a Moon Cradle adaptation in the form of events, and that maybe the one-year anniversary, maybe the first one-year anniversary unit is going to be a new Atis, and then this Roni right here. Which, uh, if that's the case, I would definitely want to summon for this Roni right here, because uh, long-haired Roni, definitely good. But um, this is why I kind of wanted to talk about approaching the one-year anniversary. If you're someone like me, who uh, has a decent amount of the units in the game, you know, I don't know how exactly how many four stars I have, but I have a pretty stacked account. Uh, I would definitely say, I, it, rightfully so, you know, I've spent a little bit of money here and there on the game. Uh, probably a few hundred dollars at least. Um, but for people who don't have such stacked accounts, this anniversary is going to be much more important to you because with the increased rates, the more gems you have, the more units you have a chance to pull. And since anniversaries tend to go for an entire month and we roughly get a banner every week... There's probably going to be like two, three, four anniversary banners. Um, so you're going to want to be ready for that. I think they probably will do double character banners for each one because since it's an anniversary, they want to have more characters as opposed to less characters. Um, so I think that's definitely something to be aware of. I, I, like I said, I think October is going to be filled with bait banners and then early November as well. But then when we get to the end of November when the anniversary actually starts... Um, I already know there's going to be tons of people who are like, oh, I wasn't ready. Oh, I shouldn't have summoned on this banner before. So I know it's hard sometimes. I have trouble too. If, you know, if there's a character that looks really cool, I tend to want to summon. But this is going to be one of those times where we're this close to the anniversary. Save, save, save. Don't be tempted to summon on anything. Uh, if it helps you, just don't even look at the summon page. I know you people want to do their daily single but, uh, you know, besides that, just stay away from the summon page. Don't be tempted, no matter what characters come out, because they aren't going to... I I, I can't say for certain, but I can almost, like, 99% sure that they're not going to be as good as the anniversary units themselves. Now, obviously, if you're someone who summons more for characters as opposed to gameplay, you know, obviously you can summon for whoever you want. You know, the anniversary characters might not be people you care about, so then that's obviously up to you. But in terms of gameplay purposes... Um, I definitely say save for the anniversary. Now, here's another thing I want to talk about. The possibility of a new rarity. I think it's definitely possible we see five stars added to the game. Um, I think after the one-year anniversary for Memory Defrag is when we first saw five stars. Obviously, they're up to six stars now. Um, I don't know if it was the first anniversary or a little bit after, but I know it was pretty quick when we saw five stars. Plus, the fact that when we still rank up now... We're still getting more team costs. Like, my team cost is so high that, you know, I, I can use any units I want and still have plenty of space left over. But since it's still growing, that obviously means that they eventually have a plan to make units that have more team costs. So I definitely think that uh, five-star units can definitely possibly be a thing. And then what they would probably just end up doing is four-star ra rarity would go up. So you'd have a higher chance to pull four stars, and then the five stars would be harder to get. Um, I would say, you know, five stars will probably be the new 3%, and then 6% across the board will probably be for four stars. But 
I definitely, especially with these banners becoming bigger and bigger with all the four stars we have in there, I think our first five stars being at the anniversary, there's a very high chance of that. But for all I know, I could be wrong, but um, I think it's definitely just something to keep in mind. That's why also maybe don't go all in on banners until the anniversary because you're going to want to have the new rarity. Obviously, the content's going to get harder, and you're going to want to have as many of the new units as possible. And if there are four anniversary banners, that means that's eight total five stars that we will see in that first month. And if you, I'm sure, obviously, they're going to give out diamond cubes during the anniversary as well. You know, they'll probably be very generous with a login as well. Uh, probably free multis during the anniversary as well. Maybe like a free, you know, general pool multi a day during the anniversary. Um. Or something like that. Who knows? But um, I think a definitely a five-star rarity is something we could definitely uh, have to be on the lookout for. But I think other than that, that's pretty much everything there is to say on all the stuff that's kind of shown here. Um, what's today? Today is Monday. So we'll probably have another banner announced towards the end of this week. Uh, I'm not sure where they're going to go after Mr. Angel of Death, but um, despite the fact that I need more fire units, even if another fire unit comes out before the anniversary, I'm not going to be summoning. I'm just going to save, save, save. I just have to finish off this banner, and then I'll be good to go. I think Ordinal resets around, like, the 6th or something. So by the time that happens, I will be done there. For, so from the 6th of October all the way to, you know, November 20th or whatever, uh, I will be saving nonstop. Uh, which that's roughly, you know, a month and a half. A month and a half of saving is definitely at least like 1,500 Diamond Cubes if you do all your dailies, get all the logins, and do all the events um, to the best of your ability. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Let me know what you guys think down below. What unit would you like to see for the anniversary? Obviously, if they're doing Moon Cradle Roni here, we'll probably get a say that's Moon Cradle as well, uh, as well as maybe a Star King, Kirito, and Asuna. Um, I think would be, or Star King and Queen, um, it would definitely be possible, but I'm curious what else they might decide to do, because originally I thought they were going to save like a dual blade, the first dual blade Kirito for the anniversary, but we already have two now. We have our first actual dual blade Kirito, like the, with the actual weapon type, but in terms of like, just in general using them for an animation, we have two. But, uh, well I guess three, I guess you could technically say, um... Uh, there's the, uh, Alfheim Kirito, where just part of his incarnate, he dual, he dual wields. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know what characters you want to see for the anniversary. I would say the only thing that would, might tempt me before the anniversary would be if they released a Klein. But, uh, I think even now, despite, you know, not having a four-star Klein in the game, I still think I would hold back and not summon because I can always get him later, as unfortunate as it is to say. That's going to be it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe for more if you're new to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day, everyone.